Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are here week 17 of the NFL season. Today will be the last installment of DFS Friday's Plays and Fades edition. Thank you for being on board. We'll continue it next year. For the time being in the playoffs, I'll be doing something a little bit different. I'll be building lineups on my Twitter handle, LandVM10. Before we get into the plays, something we need to monitor this week. Last year, week 17 was one of the best years I've ever had in DFS. And one of the main reasons why is I did a deeper dive than usual. There are three crucial things you need to be aware of for week 17. Number one, the playoff scenarios. Who's gonna be playing to improve their seating? Who's not gonna improve their seating, whether they win or lose this week? It's something that's very important because it's gonna open up value for the rest of the slate. Number two, incentives and bonuses. Some of the guys that you're gonna see featured on the play section have a lot riding on this particular week. If a guy hits X amount of targets, he gets $750,000 more on his contract. That's a lot of money going around. So be sure to look into that. And number three, coach speak. What is the coaching staff saying? Are guys gonna play the whole game? Are they gonna rest at halftime? Word is, is there's gonna be a guy on the sideline of the Steeler game telling the Steeler coaching staff what the score of New England is gonna be. Because if New England is up 17-0 at halftime, they're probably gonna pull the players. With that being said, let's get into week 17 with the quarterback we like this week, Cam Newton. Cam Newton is featured in the only game this weekend that has two teams that are fighting for playoff seeding. If Atlanta wins, they're in. And Carolina could potentially win the division depending on what happens in the Saints-Bucks game. With that being said, there's one thing we know for a fact. Cam is going to play the entire game. If you follow the trend this season, Cam throws more on the road than he does at home. And you don't need to worry about any win conditions. They're playing in the Dome in Atlanta. Cam in the past has had some nice performances inside domes. Next up, one of my favorite running backs on the slate, Deion Lewis. Everything that made Deion Lewis a must play last week is making him a must play this week. The Jets are gonna be without Mo Wilkerson and potentially Leonard Williams, two of their best interior pass rushers. With that being said, New England is close to a two touchdown favorite. What does that translate to? Game script, a lot of Deion Lewis. Especially if James White is out again, it's probably gonna be only Mike Gillisley and Deion Lewis in the backfield. Deion Lewis at his salary is still priced down should be closer to the 8k range based on his workload and production next up another running back that i really like this week alex collins alex collins in four straight games has seen 17 or more touches he's become the clear lead back in that backfield in baltimore and baltimore is close to a double digit favorite at home one of my favorite things to do in dfs is take the running back with a big home point spread the point spread is telling you that vegas thinks that they are going to be up the entire game and come second half they're going to be pounding the rock something that baltimore loves to do baltimore is one of the many teams this weekend that are playing for their playoff lives they're going to be riding the legs of alex collins next up one of the wide receivers that has a lot riding on this week adam thielen adam thielen needs seven catches to reach a huge incentive in his contract. Minnesota is still one of the many teams that are vying for playoff seeding. They could potentially go from the two seed to the four seed, depending on what happens this weekend. Don't let the big point spread scare you. There's been great rapport between Case Keenum and Adam Thielen. And I'm sure Adam Thielen has nudged Case Keenum while they're watching film and saying, hey man, maybe I'll throw you 50K if I hit this bonus. Love me some Adam Thielen coming off a big dud on Saturday night last week. Next up, another wide receiver that has a lot riding on this week. Making his first appearance of the year. Jarvis needs 105 yards to hit the thousand mark on the season and with eight more catches hits a bonus in his contract. A couple weeks ago against the Buffalo zone defense, Jarvis Landry caught double digit passes in that game. I think the Dolphins play spoiler and they're going to be doing that with a lot of Jarvis this week. Next up, my favorite tight end on the slate, Jack Doyle. I said on the slate, that's not true, Rob Gronkowski is, but here's the thing. If I'm looking at a cheap tight end this week, I think Jack Doyle. As far as Gronk goes, he has a lot riding on this week too. A lot of bonuses attached to his contract. But Jack Doyle is a Houston Texan killer. And it seems like Chuck Pagano's out of his way in Indianapolis. And the word out of the streets of Indianapolis is that these players are gonna send him out on his high horse. Despite what many think, a lot of the players love Chuck Pagano. And I think they're gonna show out this week. Next up, my favorite defense on the board, Minnesota Vikings. At home, double digit favorite against the Chicago Bears led by Mitchell Trubisky. I'm gonna leave it at that. Moving on over to the fade section. The quarterback that I'm staying away from this week, especially because of his price, Ben Roethlisberger. While I'm on Ben, the running back I'm fading this week, Le'Veon Bell. And here's the reason why. I'm attaching both of these guys together because of what I said in the opening. The Steelers are a double digit favorite at home. Right away, no, no on Ben Roethlisberger. Big Ben and Le'Veon Bell didn't play in the fourth quarter of last week's game. And if Le'Veon Bell was on the main slate, 
That was a terrible, terrible play on FanDuel last week. When you're paying close to 10K for a player, you need minimum 30 in GPPs. With New England being a double digit favorite at home, I can see New England having a 21 0 lead at halftime. The Steelers getting the word that it's 21 0 in New England and them just pulling the starters. And if you pay over 9K for Le'Veon Bell and 8,500 for Ben Roethlisberger and they don't play a second half, bedtime. Moving on over to the wide receiver. I think has been featured in the fade section a lot this year, and it's not gonna change this week. Des Bryant. Des Bryant is a shot fighter. I've said it many times. If you've listened to the podcast, cheap plug. Des Bryant can't get separation. The only silver lining in this scenario is that the Eagles are probably gonna arrest everybody. But with that being said, Des just isn't getting it done against anybody, and I'm not paying his salary. He should be priced. 6,500 and under on FanDuel. Then I would maybe take a sniff at Des Bryant. Next up, the tight end I'm staying away from this week, Evan Ingram. Got to point out, at the time that we are recording this podcast, he is questionable, but all the talks out of the Giants is that Evan Ingram really wants to play this week, go out with his teammates. With that being said, Eli Manning is set to start this week, but Davis Webb is going to see the field at some point. I don't know what Davis Webb and Evan Ingram's chemistry is like on the field. I'm staying away from it. Evan Ingram is still priced as one of the elite tight ends in the NFL. Coming off a very solid rookie campaign, I want no part of him this week. Last but not least, the defense we're staying away from strictly because of playoff scenario and motivation. The Jacksonville Jaguars. They are and have been the most expensive defense on the slate. Squaring up against the Tennessee Titans this week. Tennessee wins, they are in the playoffs. Jacksonville cannot improve their playoff seating. A wide receiver core in Jacksonville that has been decimated by significant injury after significant injury. This could be a spot where Jacksonville just takes their foot off the gas and kind of eases it up. And at their price, I'm not paying for them. Tennessee is going to be more motivated because they win and they're in. And I think that's the best scenario you can have in sports. So there you have it, guys. Week 17 edition of Plays and Fades. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. Be on the lookout for Degeneration Bets, DFS Fridays every week. We're going to be going into the playoffs with that. LandVM10 is where you can find me on Twitter and all social media. Probably going to be doing something different as far as Plays and Fades go for the playoffs. Be sure to follow both my personal handle, at DegenerationBet, and Veterans Minimum on Twitter. Thank you for showing love all this time, and we'll see you soon.